G'day, Glav here and thanks for checking back in. If you like these videos, hit that like button and please don't forget to subscribe. This was meant to be a bucket list type ride. Well, it was almost, bar a few hiccups. 3,600 kilometres over 13 days covering a lot of Thailand. Chang Stadium. Behind the stadium, you'll see in a minute them pulling down all the infrastructure from the MotoGP, which was run here only a few weekends back. It's also right beside the historical Buriram Castle. So we're on our way now from Buri Ram to the Kalko district. We'll stay here overnight and tomorrow we will go and see one of the most beautiful Watts, the Wat Pra Thart Farson Q. Wat Farsaw Q, meaning temple on a glass cliff, also known as Wat Fra Thart Far Q, is a Buddhist monastery and temple, that means Wat in Thai, in Khao Khor, Pechabun. The Wat is set on about 830 metre peak, a few hundred metres from the town of Kayam Son on main highway 12 between Basonalok and Lom Sak. The main pagoda and surrounding buildings are adorned with over 5 million colourful mosaic tiles and pottery items and are set in a mountain location. There's five Buddha statues already finished there. There is a stained glass gazebo and a smaller pagoda in the gardens. Simply.
How's this for a breakfast with a view? So it's day three of my trip, 21st of October 2019, and today I'm travelling between Khao Kho and Non Kai. I'll do about 320 kilometres and been staying at the Ban Samran Hotel tonight. Um, why are we staying at Non Kai is because once again it's up on the river on the border to Lao, and tomorrow um, we're going to do the Skywalk, which is slightly north west of Non Kai and tonight we're going to have a beautiful meal as you'll see in a minute down on the Mekong River. It's day four and today we're heading from Non Kai firstly to the Skywalk about 70 k's from memory but overall today we'll double back on ourselves, back through Non Kai, out to Phu Ra, which will be about 330 kilometres all up. So from Non Kai we head northwest essentially following the Mekong, and do about 70 k's out to the Skywalk. Wat Fa Tak Su is a temple that was a place to treat serious practitioners for Buddhist meditation. Now, I'm sure the temple operates that way in its tradition, but I think it's a bit more focused on visitors and the skywalk and the panoramic views of the Mekong these days. There's a section just before the skywalk where people can make donations, and if you make a donation, the skywalk is free. The U-shaped skywalk um, extends from the cliff edge and makes a perfect area for viewing the vast open space in the mountains area and in the magical Mekong River. One point to note though is I wouldn't be going out on the skywalk if you suffer from vertigo. Wow. Thailand. Wow. It's day five and we're planning to head to Lake Siricat. However, crap, 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 I get about 170 kilometres and the Harley decides that it's going to emit a massive noise from the lower end. Don't know what it is at this stage, just know I've got to shut the bike down. Get in touch with Harley and oh bugger, it's a public holiday, they can't come out today, uh, but they'll come out tomorrow. I'm stuck till they arrive in the middle of nowhere, but fortunately there was a little hotel resort just about where I stopped the bike, and I'm going to have to spend the next 24 hours here. <laughs> Well, it's day six of my ride, and today I'm going to spend the morning just at the resort waiting, wasting time. And then in the afternoon, the Harley van comes and picks me up, and I travel just short of 300 kilometres to my hotel, the Yai Gardens, for the next couple of nights. So it's day seven of the ride. I'm in Chiang Mai. I've been out to Richco Harley Davison this morning. And fortunately, it's not as bad as we thought. The compensator valve came loose in the primary. Uh, and fortunately, it never came right off because that would have been an absolute disaster mechanically and also possibly from an accident point of view. Um, 
Given the Harley will be under repair all day and I won't pick it up till tomorrow and meet up with my mate Stu tomorrow, I'll make good use of the day and do some videoing and go up to Doi Sathep, which is not far out of Chiang Mai. Wat Phra Tat Doi Sathep is the Theravada Buddhist temple in Chiang Mai province. The temple is often referred to as Doi Sathep, although this is actually the name of the mountain where it is located. It is a sacred site to many Thai people. The temple is about 15 kilometres from the city centre of Chiang Mai and is situated at an elevation of about 1,073 metres. From the temple, as you'll see, there are impressive views of downtown Chiang Mai. The original founding of the temple remains a bit of a legend. There are a few varied versions. This temple is said to have been founded in 1383 when the first stupa was built. And over time, the temple has expanded and been made to be more extravagant with many more holy shrines added. A road to the temple was first built in 1935. From the car park at the temple's base, visitors can climb 309 steps to reach the pagodas. Bloody tough going for us old unfit blokes. So I'm about to head down 400 steps. I was going to talk about this on the way up, but frankly, I just didn't have the breath to draw breath to speak. Last time I came up here about 12 months ago, a Thai lady walked up beside me. I was completely breathless. She was completely fit, 80 years old, and almost ran up the stairs. Shameful, really, but fun. Well, I spent two nights at the Yai Gardens in Chiang Mai, and what a contrast. They moved me into this room for the second night, and boy, this is a, from one end of the spectrum from the other. Remembering that this only cost me, I can't remember, five or six hundred baht, you know, 20 or 30 bucks. Yeehaw! Well, it's day eight, and I'm leaving Chiang Mai this morning. I'm going to meet up with my mate Stu just outside of uh, Chiang Mai, where we'll proceed uh, on the Mei Hong Song Loop up to Pai, and then end up in Mei Hong Song tonight. About 175 kilometres today of serious motorcycling. This is tight, twisty, technical riding. It's not about the scenery today, although we'll see lots of beautiful scenery, but it's all about the ride.
on, they locked themselves out. <laughs> Well, we're about 50 k's outside of Mae Hong Song, in between Pai and Mae Hong Song, and just get a look at this view from up here. Just a shame it's not a perfect day, it's a little bit hazy, but cop this. So we've just come from Pi. We follow this road. We're currently here. Um, we've got about 60 k's to go, and we're going to spend the night in Mae Hong Song. That'll be after about 200 kilometres from this morning, and about two and a half thousand corners. One of the great motorcycling roads in the world. So here we are in Mae Hong Song. It's a nice enough little town, but it's not really about the town. It's about the ride to the town. Well, only, um, Stu and I only cranked about 250 kilometres today. Uh, well, I did anyway. He had to go a lot longer because he'd come, he's come from further out. Um, but it's all about the ride to here. As I said earlier, about two and a half thousand corners or something. Um, so all about the ride. Great day, but a hard day's ride. So for dinner in Mae Hong Song, we discovered that the night markets, which are around the Mae Hong Song Lake, were only about three or 400 metres, maybe a little bit 500 metres from where we were staying. So we wandered down there to take a look and what beautiful scenery it was between the lake and the pagodas, etc. I ended up having, I think, um, hoi tod mai say hoi, which is ended up being a very crispy omelette with um, uh, bean sprouts and then some crispy pork and a banana smoothie, all less for 100 baht. How can you go better? So we've left Mae Hong Song and on the way down to the Doi Intanon, already been through <laughs> dozens and dozens of corners and we're only 10 kilometres out. Um, today about, we're only doing about 250 k's but it's about seven and a half hours riding. Tells you what we've got in front of us, the mountains. Um, look at this scenery, just unbelievable. Lois, look at the view from here, eh? Also, wanted to show you some of the things you've got to be careful of in Thailand. They've had some big rains up here. I'm standing on a lane of road and uh, have a look at this. Bungie. 
also like to make a correction I mentioned in one of my previous posts that the, the um, that we had a couple of two and a half thousand turns it's actually famous for 1864 corners not a great model but it's the best I could do with short notice This is the entrance that you walk from the car park down on the road up and into the Doi Inthanon. Pretty with the waterfall. So here we are at the Doi Inthanon. Apparently this is the highest point in Thailand. It's about 7,000 odd feet. Just a beautiful, magnificent place that if you come to Thailand, it is a must see. Just glorious. Unfortunately, there's no sun here today. Last time I was here, you could see right over the um, countryside for miles and miles and miles. It was picturesque clear, but we're clouded in today and they're expecting rain. Interesting. Um, I'm at the second Doi temple and the clouds have started to roll in over the top of us. Hope we don't get any rain on the way down. So here we are in May Sarang, last hundred odd k's, beautiful ride, sweeping bends through the jungle. I think we've only done about 350 plus k's today. That's taken us seven and a half hours. It was really technical riding, twisty, tight, low speed. But um, I don't think there's too much here. Um, it's just convenient to stop here because we've spent all day in the saddle, except for when we went up to the Doyenthanon. Um, we'll be on our way tomorrow to May Sot. So it's day 10 and we leave May Sarang and head for Tak via May Sot. We'll do an approximate distance of about 300 kilometres today. Um, this section of the riding had it all, from the tight and technical mountain passes to the open sweeping high speed areas. Uh, great riding. For a long way we actually follow the border between Thailand and Burma or Myanmar um, right down for hundreds of kilometres. Once again, sensible stuff, it follows the river.
So we're coming towards May Sot, and there is a village named May La, made completely of banana tree leaves. We thought it'd be really interesting to ride into the village and take a look, only to be greeted by what looked like to us to be the Thai army. We asked if we could take a look, and in no uncertain terms were told neither Thais nor Farang, i.e. foreigners, were welcome here. We did not realise at the time that May La is a refugee camp in Thailand. It was established in 1984 in the Ta Song Yang district, Tak province in the Dorna Range area, and houses 50,000 Burmese refugees. We understand the number continues to rise as of this year. May La is the largest refugee camp of Burmese refugees in Thailand. Over 90% are the persecuted ethnic Karen. These camps are overseen and run by the Thailand-Burma Border Consortium, a union of 11 international non-government organisations that provide food, shelter and non-food items to the Burmese refugees and displaced people. The first refugees arrived in 1984, mostly from the Karen or the Karini ethnicities, fleeing armed conflict and ethnic persecution by the Burmese government. Thousands of villages, especially in the Karen and Karini states, were razed and burned dur during the conflict. So we've arrived in Tak after about five and a half hours today. Uh, we didn't stay in May Sot, we decided to push on a bit further. I'm not sure how many Ks we did, it's only 250 or 300, um, but really tight, twisty going for the first two or three hours. Um, over the mountains, as you can see, you can see we're above the clouds at one stage and the clouds rolling through underneath us. And then on to some sweepy roads following the river up, which is on the Burmese-Myanmar border. And then <laughs> typical TIT, this is Thailand, this beautiful, for the last hour, six-lane uh, sweeping highway that cuts through the mountains. Just brilliant. Happy days. This room is 600 baht, um, 30 Aussie dollars. Well, it's day 11 and today we travel from Tuck to Lockbury. Um, it's a pretty uneventful ride of about 300 k's. Um, the main reason is we want to see the Glass Temple on the way through. It's located in the Utai Tani district. Wat Chantaram is a gleaming gem in central Thailand's Utai Tani province. The glass interiors of this gorgeous Buddhist temple are a dazzling spectacle and well off the beaten tourist path. Wat Chantaram dates back to Thailand's Ayataya period, 1351 to 1767, and is nicknamed the Diamond Temple. Once a very busy place of worship, the temple was abandoned following the fall of the Ayataya kingdom. However, in 1789, a monk called Lung Pho Yai took care of the temple and oversaw renovations and expansion. Subsequent years saw further improvements, helping to create a dazzling site in rural Thailand. According to ancient Thai beliefs, glass and other reflective surfaces help to repel evil spirits, and this is likely the reason for the heavy use of glass and mirrors at Wat Chantaram. Wat Chantaram's large temple complex is home to several other stunning features. Prasat Phong Kham, or the Golden Castle, is a striking piece of architecture with golden walls and numerous small prangs, that is, spiky spire-like roof details. The inside is covered floor to ceiling in gold leaf with glimmering walls and columns that bounce lights off intricate carvings on the doors. The complex's old monastery features beautiful artwork depicting the Lord Buddha's life. Additionally, there are small pavilions dotted throughout the site where you can rest in peaceful meditation. Well, 300 odd kilometres today, and here I am in Lock Berry. Um, gonna go this afternoon to see some ancient ruins and stuff. This is six, 600 baht, this hotel room, that's 30 bucks. Um, lashed out a bit more tonight.
quite nice. A view of the mountains, I guess. Praprung Sam Yacht is Lockbury's best known landmark and one of its oldest at about 800 years. It's one of several monuments that date back to the Khmer era. The monument's in the centre of Lockbury town and is perhaps best known for the large number of mo monkeys that run free, constantly on the lookout for food. And in fact, one scared the crap out of me when it jumped on my back and I had to flick it free, then it got quite aggro with me. Fra Prang Sam Yacht, which translates to Three Holy Prangs, is featured on the Provincial Seal of Lockbury, which depicts Vishnu in front of its monument's three prangs. The Wat consists of three Khmer-style laterite prangs, the central one being the tallest and the two other smaller. The prangs stand on a low base and are connected by vaulted passageways. Pra Prang Sam Yacht was built when Lockbury was under the control of the Khmer Empire from Angkor. The monument was likely founded in the late 12th or early 13th century and during the reign of King Jayavarman VII, the king who built the Angkor Tom, the capital of the Khmer Empire. The Wat was probably built as a Buddhist sanctuary as the King Jayavarman VII was a Mahayan Buddhist, contrary to its predecessors who were Hindu. During the reign of King Nari, king of Ayutthaya, in the second half of the 17th century, the Pa Prang Samyot was converted into a Buddhist monument and a brick vayan, assembly hall in other words, was added to the complex then. It's day 12 of my ride and I'll do about 300 kilometres a day from Lopbury down to, say, Kao. Before I leave Lopbury, I will visit King Nare's palace. King Nare's palace in Lopbury was built by the King Nare the Great, the king who ruled Ayutthaya between 1656 and 1688. He ordered the palace built in 1666 in the same area as King Ramusan's palace. King Nare stayed here for about eight or nine months a year except during the raining season. He designated Lopbury as the second capital of the Ayutthaya kingdom. The palace was a place for relaxation, hunting, administering the country's affairs and welcoming official visitors. When the king died in 1688, Lopbury and the palace were abandoned. Um, in October 1924, Prince Damrong and Prince Narasara opened the Chantara Pizan Pavilion in King Narai's palace as a museum, calling it the Lopbury Museum. Later in 1961, the name of the museum was changed to Somdet Pra Narai National Museum. To date, the museum has exhibited more than 1,864 items of the collection of ancient artefacts in different pavilions and buildings of the palace. After visiting the palace, I'm heading to Say Kao, as it's a good midpoint for me between um, here and home. And also I'll get time to have a look at Pang Cedar Waterfalls. Me and the Dark Side Riders visited this before, but unfortunately, given there was no water, we did not enter the National Park. So I'm on my way to Seikau and just have a look at the overhang on this friggin' truck and the way it levers itself and bounces the front wheel. TIT, this is Thailand. So here I am in Sokal, um, probably done 300 odd today, went to the Royal Museum and Ruins this morning. Um, you just got a view of the room, uh, one of those modernistic industrial types, pretty clean, pretty modern, only thing is the bed's as hard as a rock. I guess what can you expect for uh, just over 20 Aussie dollars, 400 odd baht it was.
Day 13, last day on my way home to Narjom Tem, about 210 kilometres. Get about a third of the way there, go to pull up at a set of traffic lights, and guess what? No gear lever, gear lever and shaft have fallen out back on the highway somewhere. I'm on the side of the road again. Friggin' Harley. Fortunately, uh, there's police at a little roadside restaurant where I happen to pull up, and they invite me for a coffee. Hey. So these kind policemen are having a coffee and tea with me. Uh, very nice men. Uh, when my Harley Davidson broke down again <laughs> uh, on this trip. And yeah. so they say, come and have coffee because they know I was very upset. So I'll say hello. Hello. <laughs> Cop con cup. <laughs> Fortunately for me, my mate Stu raced down to Patia, picked up some spare parts and raced back at breakneck speed for me to fix the bike and get going. Well, that's it from me. That's my almost bucket list ride done and dusted. Got home safely. Please remember people, life is so short. Therefore, live life today.